Hi, this is David. I'm laughing because my sweet wife, <coughs> who's still a member of the uh, LDS Church, <laughs> said I could speak but with only a mute voice. So, she's cute. Okay, my subject today, <laughs> I feel like I'm giving you a two and a half minute talk. You're all too old to even remember what a two and a half minute talk uh, is all about. Um, I guess the subject today um, that I'm going to just hit on is basically um, I guess I'm going to do feelings versus facts. One of the things that um, when I recovered, uh, not fully recovered, uh, because I don't think once you've been uh, a Mormon you ever fully recover. But in my recovery process, I did learn a lot about feelings versus facts. Um, there's a heavy, heavy uh, emphasis in the Mormon cult that it's how you feel. It's not what the reality is or the facts. It's how you feel. And uh, if you feel it's the right thing to do, then you basically do it. Um, if you pray uh, in the uh, doctrines of the Mormon Church, uh, and you pray about, should I marry this person? Should I buy this car? Should I uh, move here? Um, should I buy this dress? Or whatever. They are taught to believe that how they feel is the truth. And that that basically uh, is God speaking to them. And uh, it's through their heart, not through their mind. And that's uh, indoctrinated at a very, very young age, so it becomes very difficult as a young adult and throughout the rest of our lives to um, move away from our feelings rather than um, facts. And so when you um, present facts to a Mormon person, which I've discovered this morning on many of the responses that I get, um, that no matter what um, uh, fact, or uh, fact pattern you present to a Mormon, if they still believe in the Mormon philosophy, they're going to say, well, that's not true. That's uh, something you made up, or whoever wrote that down, or whoever made that picture uh, is some kind of an apostate or someone who is trying to make us look bad. Well, the fact of the matter is that uh, as human beings, if we follow our feelings, um, it can get us in a lot of trouble. Now, I certainly don't want to come across as a hard, uh, hearted person, but feelings are not important. Of course, feelings are important. And um, making our life decisions by feelings, uh, to say the least, can be one of the most dangerous ways to live our lives. Uh, we feel good about the guy that has, uh, you know, we're a young girl and we're going to get married, and we feel good that uh, uh, the guy has tattoos and uh, that he has rings in his nose and that he is a... Um, a white supremacist. He's never had a job in his life, but he says he's going to get one. And he doesn't need school because he's so intelligent, and uh, she feels that's the right guy to marry. Well, <clears throat> you're not stupid. You wouldn't be watching these if you're stupid. When we guide our children as parents, we have to say to them, whoa, whoa, honey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why don't you just uh, slow down? Well, once you've been indoctrinated into this religious organization's uh, uh, paradigms, you basically start to live your life based upon feeling. And I, I really feel that I should buy two or three houses. I think the housing market will go up and I'll become very rich. And then the bubble burst and you end up in a bankruptcy court. So I, I just want to be a voice of um, uh, uh, compassion. I think that uh, feelings are an important thing. And I think that um, following our heart in many cases, some cases, uh, is a good thing. But when we make a decision of a, a mate, uh, make a decision of where we're going to live, what job we're going to have, what school, or if we're going to go to school, you know, the, the Mormons have this uh, burning in your bosom. When the missionaries come uh, knocking on people's doors, they give them a Book of Mormon and they say, you know, read it and then pray about it with real intent um, that you'll get a burning in your bosom. Well, 
The only burning I ever got in my bosom is when I had quad bypass surgery a year ago, and I had a hell of a burn in my chest now for over a year. So does that mean, you know, that the bypass surgeon was a true member or true something? I don't know. So measuring our lives with feelings and measuring our lives with burning in our bosom, um, I find um, uh, negative. I think that we have a brain, and I don't think that there's anything in our bosom that is designed for heat other than um, uh, nerves, and if you spill something hot on yourself, you feel it. But for the bosom to burn from within as a sign of truthfulness, that God, uh, or whoever you believe in, is speaking to you directly, boy, um, that can be on some really thin ice and dangerous ground. I've been there. I've done that. Um, I've got 14 kids, because I had a burning in my bosom, and it uh, lowered below my bosom, and before I know it, you know, I've got all kinds of support and, and responsibility. So, the, the reason that I think that thinking is better than burning in the bosom and, you know, cards, uh, tarot cards and lighting candles and Ouija boards and crystal balls. I think those things all fall into a category where whatever you want to do, you pay the medium enough money, she's going to say, yeah, that's what you should do. So to be independent, to be um, successful, it, to yourself, doesn't mean cars and money and those kinds of things. But for you and me to feel successful, I think that we have to uh, think, and I think we have to investigate, and I think we have to uh, challenge, and um, be intelligent beings, not to be puppets, not to be silly people, that we get in a room and everyone is bearing their testimony and we feel pressure, and we go, well, gosh, I guess I'm going to bear my testimony too. I may not have one, but everyone says that I do, and I get that burning. Um, I remember in sacrament meeting, uh, they have what they call a fast and testimony meeting. I think it's the first uh, Sunday of the month unless it's changed. Everything has changed in the Mormon church, but um, the, the members get to get up and uh, bear their testimony. And oh my gosh, this can be the, the joke of the century. You've got uh, four-year-old children standing up there with the mother whispering in their ear, I know Joseph Smith was a prophet. I mean, you've got kids that are indoctrinated right from three, four years old on up. And then you'll get, um, you know, in testimony meeting, old women uh, that uh, have nothing to say and nothing to do, but they get to stand up in front of a hundred people and pretend uh, that they do have something to say, and you sit there trying not to go to sleep. And then you'll get teenagers that get up and, you know, oh my God, I've heard things of teenagers, you know, he really wanted to sleep with me, and I was naked, but... I could feel the burning in my bosom, and I, I think the Lord saved me. Oh, good Lord. You hear all these uh, young people, middle-aged people, family people getting up and bearing testimony to ordinary things that just happen in life. Shit happens. When things go bad, um, it's a temptation of the devil. When things go good, you know, it's praise the Lord. Uh, he has blessed me. So you have this circular kind of thinking uh, that can be very dangerous, very dangerous for a successful life. If you're kind of interested in drugs and alcohol and suicide and uh, being miserable your whole life, then, you know, go for it. Go for it. But I've learned after I've started to recover from being in a cult and Mormonism that um, there are certain things that you do that are based upon intelligence and upon fact that guide your life. If you are a feeling person, then you're on a ship with no rudder. Whichever the way the winds blow, I'm being blessed, I'm being tested. And you have no direction and no control over where your life is or where it may go. So be conscious of that uh, philosophy of the Mormon Church, that your feelings are going to be your guide. And when you've got two young, uh, attractive missionaries that are giving you all kinds of attention to join their cult, uh, and they're smiling and love bombing you and, and complimenting you for reading the Book of Mormon and praying with them and they've, you've stopped smoking and, and, and you're in that emotional um, ty typhoon, um, they're going to put you on the spot. Do you feel the burning? Do you think this is the right thing to do? Do you agree with us? 
and you're going to go, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I guess I do feel a burn. Okay, and then they get the baptismal date. Before you know it, you're in there, and uh, there's a million things they never told you that you're signing up for. But they do tell you the truth on one thing. Before you can get baptized in the Mormon church, the missionaries have to uh, interview you, and you have to commit to paying your tithing. Now, that's a nice phrase, I'm going to pay tithing to the Lord. That's pretty soft. That's pretty nice. Here's the brain side. You are going to pay 10% of your gross income to this church the rest of your living days. Doesn't matter if you're on Social Security, doesn't matter if you're on unemployment, doesn't matter if you're on welfare, you will pay us that 10%. See, that's not quite as soft as pay your tithing. Say all the right things, the choir is singing and you see floating angels, but then turn it over to your mind and say, gee, 10%. Um, now, you go to the temple for the first time. This is a huge privilege in the Mormon church to be able to get your endowments. Well, you're getting your endowments and they're getting more than your money. One of the things you do is you raise your right hand to the square and you promise before God, angels, and these witnesses at this altar, they have a couple of witnesses up there too, that you will live the law of consecration. Gee, that sounds kind of soft and easy. Now, turn it over to your brain. What is the law of consecration? In the temple ceremony it says you will give all that you have now and all that you will have in the future to, and they'll say it, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. That's part of the temple ceremony. Now, you've given your house, your car, your children, your furniture, your TV, everything. <clears throat> if the bishop wants it, you can just come in and get it. And it used to be, before 1990, you did that under the penalty of death. Uh, like the old Danites that uh, did kill people during Brigham Young's time, uh, you promised to slit your throat or cut your stomach open if you ever divulge the things that I've just said. I'm not going to slip my throat open and I'm not going to uh, spill my guts on the ground. I'm just going to tell the truth. You have gone to the temple and you have committed to give everything you earn to the upbuilding of the kingdom and everything that you ever will earn under the law of consecration. And uh, uh, long story short, the law of consecration is that you give everything to the bishop. And then the bishop decides who he wants to give it to. And I don't think he would ever give it to his family or his friends or be involved in any kind of nepotism. Nah, no, nah, the Mormons are different. They would never do that. And so the bishop then decides how much land uh, you gave the church. He gives to different people and how many cars and who gets the better cars and how many people get certain wives. And, uh, you know, that is their system. And uh, you don't have to believe me. Go look it up. You don't believe me? Take the camera and throw it over in the trash can. This has been my experience. I'm not here to uh, discourage anyone from joining the Mormon Church or trying to get people out of it. I don't care. If, if they really like being in it, they like paying tithing and, and having their slow throat slit and, and promising silly stuff, gosh, who am I? I'm not Joseph Smith, the, 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 the treasure hunter prophet. I'm just an ordinary man who's been in the Mormon Church for over 50 years. I've seen it from every possible angle. Well, I've seen it from almost every possible angle. And these are the conclusions. These are the opinions that I have come to. And uh, I use this for my own therapy. I don't care if not one person in the world sees this. I don't have any, I'm not making any money. I'm not making any, gee, I'm going to be rich and famous. Come on, let's be serious here. All I'm doing is telling you my truth. Now, you can talk to other Mormons. They're going to have a separate truth. They may say, oh, this is the best thing that ever happened to me. I love the church. Hey, that's great. Now, you use your brain, and you use your mind, and then you decide for yourself, like I have, uh, what you're going to do, and how you're going to do it, and how this interfaces with your goals in life, where you want to go, what you want to do. So, use your head first. Then back it up with your feelings and your heart. But, uh, you know, one of these boys comes up to my girl with earrings in his ears and nose and, 
and a mohawk hair, haircut and uh, has shaved his eyebrows off and a can of beer in one hand. He's never had a job and uh, he never will because he's only, he dropped out in ninth grade. And she says, Daddy, I just feel good about this. I just feel that the Lord is telling me that he'll change, that he'll become famous and I'll be rich. I don't know about you, you know, I've got 14 kids, but I'd slap her alongside the head with a 2 by 4 and say, what the hell are you thinking? And the answer is, I'm not. That's the answer. I'm not thinking. I'm just following my heart. I'm following my feelings. Well, uh, you know, I don't want grandchildren that have, uh, you know, intelligence in a single digits. I'm going to try to help her see her feelings are misguiding her. And if you've raised kids, you know damn well what I'm talking about. They feel that everyone at the party is not going to be drinking. They feel that the drug is once or twice is not going to hurt them. They feel that their friend's pressure and to be popular is going to be okay. As parents, we have to sit back and go, wait a minute, where's your head? And I'm saying the same thing about religion and especially the Mormon church. I never had a chance to see these kind of tapes. I've never been exposed to anybody that had any negative experience with the Mormon church. All I was allowed to see is what the cult put in front of me. And it was always happy, happy, happy cheerleader people and BYU girls and beautiful guys and girls with their ties on and smiling. And they're as stupid as a rock. They're only cult representatives. They don't even know their own religion. You ask them an important question, they go, I don't know, but I just feel the church is right. That's their standard answer. So anyway, I just wanted to uh, summarize that our feelings certainly are important. But if we use them to guide our life, then you'll be a good Mormon. You'll be a good Mormon and you'll probably have some real sad uh, moments and, and, and periods of your life. I have had in my recovery to learn to use my damn head. To think, to get on the internet, <clears throat> go to good books, go to people that I respect, go to uh, meetings with my own eyes and my own ears, and then run it through my mind and control my feelings. And then, if it passes the mind first, and then it passes the feelings, great. But if it only passes the feelings and not the mind, watch out. I have found that to be the kiss of death for the personal happiness in a person's life. So be yourself, think, for yourself and um, be careful of letting other people guide you on the, uh, on the signposts of life through feelings, through feelings. Uh, you know, I felt like I wasn't going to go to prison. I felt like, you know, the boy with the earrings and everything was going to turn into a good guy and, uh, you know, he's already in prison. So, thank you for watching. Appreciate it.